everybody, it's Kay Beast, and for this week's art video, I am doing a fan art piece that I have wanted to do for quite some time, uh, and I finally feel confident enough in my watercolor abilities that I can actually do it. Um, so at the beginning here, I'm doing an Aurora. Um, this is, you know, why I was doing those studies a couple of weeks ago, because I was planning this piece, and the Aurora was a very important part of it, and I wanted to make sure I could actually portray it in some way. Um, the Aurora itself... I think it could be better. It's not quite what I was hoping it would be, but it's enough that it's readable as an Aurora. So I'll, you know, I'll work with it. Basically, I'm happy. Um, but yeah, so in case you're wondering, this particular piece is fan art of the book The Golden Compass or Northern Lights, as it's called in the UK, um, which is its original title. It got changed to Golden Compass over here in the US, um, which is the first in a trilogy called His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. It is my favorite fantasy book series, um, which is surprising considering like how crazy I was obsessed with Lord of the Rings in high school, which I'm still, it's still like my top three, but something about this book series I just go crazy for. Um, I loved the movie. Um, and it was, I, it was me seeing the 2007 movie, I want to say it was that year, um, that got me interested in the book series because, you know, the movie ended kind of abrupt, abruptly and I wanted to know what happened next and I was like, oh, it's a book series, I'll find it. And I found all three books and I read them in like less, like just a few days. Um, and just, yeah, just, I, I, I ate it up basically like in no time at all. And then since then I've reread the series almost every year, which I don't really do with other book series. Like I haven't read Lord of the Rings in several years. I haven't read Harry Potter in several years just because I haven't really felt like I need to, but something about this book series, I just have to pick it up again almost yearly and reread it. And I'm actually rereading it right now, <laughs> which is why I just finally decided to sit down to the fan art piece. Um, this particular scene never made it into the final movie. I think they recorded it, but they deleted it. So, like, if you watch the original trailers, there were some scenes that never showed up in the movie. It's because they, they just deleted them, and they didn't even put them in deleted scenes because it's not, like, a side scene. It's, like, a really big, important, you know, plot point, basically, and they just removed it, which is something I've been salty about forever, basically, because it's a big deal. Um, so I decided I was going to sit down and illustrate it. Um, so this obviously is pretty spoilery if you've never read the books, so I apologize. Um, but basically this is the final scene in the first book when Lyra opens the portal into another world. Um, the Aurora is a big deal in that, and um, so that's why I wanted to portray it. And yeah, um, one of the big reasons why I got so excited to reread the book series and to do this fan art piece was because of the announcement of the BBC miniseries that is currently like filming right now, I think. Um, yeah, the BBC is doing a His Dark Materials live action series. Um, they're doing all three books and I'm so excited, especially like when they started like making casting announcements. That's when I really got excited. Um, Lyra is going to be played by the actress, um, who played the girl in the movie Logan. I can't remember her name. I want to say it's Diane or Diana something. I just can't remember her name off the top of my head. But she was amazing in Logan. She's going to be playing Lyra, um, the main character. So I'm very hyped for that. Um, James McAvoy is going to be playing the character of Lord Asriel, who is um, kind of an antagonist. I wouldn't say he's the main antagonist. He, he kind of has a middle role, you know, he, his, his, his role is very interesting. Um, but he's basically the character that is sort of responsible for all of these events suddenly happening. Um, and Lyra just kind of gets caught up in it, but he's the one who's like, I'm going to do all this stuff. But it's, it's told from the point of view of a kid who's kind of to the sidelines of all these things going on. And she's just like, I have my own thing I need to do. And she's just kind of trying to get around all of the other stuff that's happening. It's complicated, but it's really good. Um, so that's going to be played. So that character is going to be played by James McAvoy. Um, there's another character named Lee Scoresby, who is, um, someone who helps Lyra a lot in the story. And he's really cool. He's being played by Lin-Manuel Miranda, which is amazing. Um, I follow him on Twitter, so once he announced that he was going to be in the show, I was like, oh, okay, I definitely need to, like, read the books and follow this and stuff. I'm, uh, I'm, the words cannot explain accurately just how excited I am, because, you know, I'm, I'm hyped. Uh, BBC miniseries tend to be very good, um, and I'm 
fairly certain they're going to be a lot more faithful to the material than the movie was. The movie cut out a lot of subplots and a lot of the, I guess you could say symbolism. I don't know. The actual story itself covers a lot of religious themes, which the movie cut out, probably because they wanted to avoid controversy. But um, they're very integral to the plot, especially in the second and final book. Like, it's kind of impossible to continue the story without those particular elements, which is probably why no other movies ever got made. So I'm pretty sure the miniseries is going to cover that. Um, but yeah, so this particular piece did give me some trouble. Um, mainly in the back, obviously most of it's background anyway. Um, but it, you know, required me to do a landscape, which is still something that I'm still struggling to do. And I used a little bit of photo reference, mostly just to get an idea of what sort of colors I would want to use, but I couldn't find an accurate enough reference for the particular terrain I was trying to show, so I kind of had to make a lot of it up out of the top of my head. Um, the ending scene takes place on the top of this icy plateau near the North Pole, um, and it's based, there's no trees or plant life because it's literally just all snow and ice, so that's what I had to show. I tried showing rocks and lumps of ice in the background to try to break up you know the monotony of the flat shape I showed like mountains in the distance because I know that like they had to go over mountains to get to where they were um, there's a chasm off to the side because there's a scene where she has to get over the chasm and I was like I'll just put that in there um, and I tried playing with textures and stuff but you know again um, landscapes are still something I'm learning to do and of course I decided to bite the bullet and just go for like this big intricate piece anyway <laughs> um, I did use the movie for some visual reference because you know it's really the only visual adaptation of the books I found so far um, mostly in just her outfit you know to get an idea for like what her her wind her tundra outfit would look like um, and yeah but like I said, this particular scene never made it into the movie, so beyond that, I kind of just had to wing it and just kind of go with how I've pictured it whenever I read the scene. Um, and I, it gets a little more detailed when I... It gets a little more, like, there's more of it once I start adding a final detail that I needed to use fine... that I decided to use fine text for. Um, right here in just the watercolor, that particular element's missing. Uh, but you'll see what it is when I get to it. Um, I did have a lot of fun playing with lighting with this. Um, some of the, like I said, some of the details with the landscape itself and with the aurora itself, um, I think could be better. And I definitely want to practice that more, that more, but the actual lighting in this piece, I'm very happy with. Um, I had a lot of fun playing around with the color scheme. Um, I actually did a thumbnail in my sketchbook using um, ink wash just to, to play with values um, and then what I did is I took a picture of it sent it to myself with Google Drive um, usually I scan things but it's kind of hard to get a clean scan with my sketchbook because of how thick the actual like binding is um, and then I opened it in Photoshop and refined the drawing um, especially with the details on Lyra because I knew I would be I would want that to be distinct the background I wasn't too worried about um, and then I did another file where I played with colors for a while, um, just to kind of, just blocked in solid color shapes to get an idea of what color scheme I wanted. And then I printed it out, which is a very standard way of working, but it's something, a way I haven't been able to do for a while because I didn't have a functioning printer until about two weeks ago, which I'm very happy. Um, so that's gonna streamline my um, art making process because now I'll actually be able to incorporate digital work in terms of like studies or whatever because it's kind of easier to play with color digitally because you can just tweak it which is what I did um, so I went up wound up using blues greens and yellows um, and the light source itself is yellow kind of a yellowish orange and generally speaking when you're working with light sources and shadows they tend to be complements of each other so since the light itself is sort of like a yellowy blue or not yellowy blue yellowy orange then the shadows would be more of a bluish purple um, but I, I pushed it more towards blue-green because um, I thought the purples would look a little strange in a icy landscape. I mean, I have seen photos where they're having purples in them, but because the aurora was going to be blue and green, I decided to stick with 
more green tones in the blues of the piece just to kind of unify it a little more and not add like another color. Um, I wasn't originally planning on going in with black line art. I, I've tried like in, in my head I'm like oh I'll, I should be able to get the detail that I want without going in with black but I have yet to actually master that and it's not until I actually do black line art that I'm like okay now it looks good. So I probably just need to just accept that that I'm usually happier with black line art even though part of me wishes that I could make stuff without it and be happy with it but I don't know. I just like line art I guess. Maybe I just need to deal with it. Um, I used my uh, white gel pen to do, you know, highlights and stuff, um, and details, especially around Lyra, to sort of push the actual effect of, you know, the light being right in front of her. And then the last thing I did was obviously, as I went, that's the fine tech, like I always do. Um, but in this particular um, piece, it had more of a, a purpose versus just, you know, random embellishments to make it look pretty. Um, the particular scene. Um, involves, you know, the portal opens up in the Aurora and then Lyra can literally see a city in the lights and which she actually is able to see a city in the lights a lot because she's just able to notice things that adults can't, which is important for plot reasons, but you know, I'm already spoiling a lot of it anyway, so whatever. Um, not like the main story, obviously. I'm going to try to avoid that, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, she can see, you know, a city in the Aurora a lot and especially when the portal opens up um, and I actually tried to make certain buildings look like the city she goes to in the second book there's a building with a glass greenhouse on the top so I tried to incorporate that and then for the last bit I used my white gel pen for the stars because I really didn't want to have to deal with cleaning up the splatter effect like last time I still got to work out how I'm actually gonna do that I think I'm just gonna do it outside but anyway this is the final piece um, I'm really happy with it and yeah Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!